Yo, what is up guys, it is Nisha here today, and uh, uh, today I got a little something different for you guys, and uh, from this point on, I kind of decided just to keep my deck profiles in link format, because moving on, um, you know, like, there aren't that, there isn't that much time left in the current format of Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, links come out in uh, July, like late July, and um, pretty much uh, the ban list takes effect in June. So, like, at that point, it's kind, of, it's kind of going to be, like, a gray area because we're not going to really be playing, like, well, I don't think there's a real point to be focusing on the current meta in Yu-Gi-Oh! We should be focusing more on Link Format. The thing is, is that Link Format, although it does have the same meta, it's going to be a whole different game. Um, so, it's, so, I think it'll be more beneficial just to focus on what's going to be, like, just looking ahead to Link Format instead of focusing on the here and now. And so, uh, I looked up, uh, OCG Weekly, um, on Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization. I was just looking through, um, and if you don't know what it is, it's just a weekly report of decks that top in the OCG, and, um, I was looking through and I saw an OCG Buster Blader deck, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, so Buster Blader is still usable in link format, I guess. I mean, um, the combo, or the soft lock combo with, um, the fusion and buster dragon requires two extra deck monsters so i don't know exactly how the interaction is going to work but um I, I i guess you know let me just report this deck profile for you guys because you know this deck profile is a bit crazy so um just starting off uh i, I have played buster blader before i am familiar with the deck so i just thought you know it would be easy for me to do this so uh we have one buster blader the destruction sword master um, it's Buster Blader in the field or graveyard, and um, if it destroys a monster, it gets to equip the monster that it destroys, or one of your opponent controls a monster that is destroyed, it gets to equip that monster. And then um, you can send a monster that it's equipped with to destroy all monsters your opponent controls with that type. So it's not really. It's okay, I mean, it's a bit gimmicky. You don't really use the effect that much, it's just, it's just another Buster Blader. So we played three of the regular Buster Blader. Um, it's funny how I see him do this, but he doesn't use the, the, the spell card that searches it. So I guess it's just for a bit of consistency with uh, Whelp and everything. Um, so one Gofu, since Gofu is limited in the OCG, um, it's kind of like a free uh, decode talker. Or not a free decode talker. It's kind of like a free... Um, like free free link monsters pretty much with uh gofu and uh it is helpful for making um like uh link monsters like deco talker and mrs radiant you can make a link spider you can make a whole bunch of stuff with it you know as long as you draw it like when you have no monsters you can go into link monsters like it's not a big deal and uh yeah i, I could definitely see why people use that i think it's going to be a staple in link format pretty like to be honest because it's just a free link monster so yeah it's definitely understandable now next off we have two of the destruction sword cards which i really don't see people use but we're gonna go over them so one is a robot buster destruction sword so he equips the buster blader from the hand or field and while he's equipped um your opponent's face up spell and trap cards can't activate their effects so I'm guessing that's pretty good. It could be actually pretty good against True Dracos. Um, and you can uh, send it to the graveyard at when it's equipped to make Buster Blade gain a thousand attacks, so it's not bad. And then uh, Wizard Buster Blade, or Wizard Buster Destruction Sword, you can, um, he stops your opponent's monster effects in the graveyard from activating, so um, kind of like a Soul Drain. So definitely, I, I can see why they're there, but um, it's like I, I didn't like you don't see them played that often. They're, they're usually side deck actually. So, um, but uh, this deck list didn't come with a side deck sadly. So um, we're just gonna be moving on. Uh, so triple Ghost Ash and Beautiful Spring, uh, whatever it's called in TCG, um, it 
It's it's a broken card. I don't think I need to explain it. Uh, double Ghost Ogre. It's also pretty good. I don't think I need to explain it. Uh, Jet Synchro on this deck makes has level sevens and level eight synchros. So level one tuners are kind of like a staple in this deck. So um, it makes sense and it's real good. You get to discard a card. Um, Buster Welp. He's like the He's like the most, he's like the reason why Buster Blader is kind of so good, because he like is like the one card searcher for everything, except for the actual Buster Blader, which is kind of sad. If he could search Buster Blader, that would be amazing, but he can attribute himself to some Buster Blader, so um, there is that. And then he can summon himself back if you control Buster Blader as well, so there's a bit of speed in that, but you know, Jet Synchron kind of does the same thing, except, you know, uh, it banishes itself after. That's why you play Omega, you know. So triple, I mean, that's true, triple, uh, double uh, Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. He um, he stops your opponent. So when he equips the Buster Blader, he has two good effects. So one, your opponent can't summon from the extra deck. So you pretty much domain lock their extra deck um, when he's equipped. So it's pretty damn amazing, especially if your opponent's trying to play Lynx as well. So um, and then his second effect is that he can actually special summon himself uh, when equipped. So since he's a level one tuner, that's pretty much a free level eight synchro, and uh, it's it's pretty free from there. Uh, glow up bulb, you know, as I said again, you know, uh, level one tuners are kind of staple in this deck just because of the whole Buster Blader thing. Um, and triple sage, because sage searches your Buster well. Um, when I played. Buster Blader, I just played one Dragon Spirit of White, um, just so I can use Sage's effect, like, um, in case I, like, drew him, and I didn't have anything to use him with, I could just use his effect, drop him, summon out, uh, Dragon Spirit of White from the deck, and then banish a spell trap card my opponent controls, but this guy didn't seem to need it, and, uh, I, I guess it worked out for him. He did top, top a local, so... Uh, effect Veiler only because it's searchable with uh, Sage. I don't think you would play it otherwise. And uh, it's not bad, but it's just not as good as it used to be. So, one for one, a um, whole bunch of level ones in this deck. And uh, same thing for for Where Arf Dow. There's a, just a whole bunch of level ones in this deck, so it's real easy. Um, and it's real nice that we have some level one searchers. Uh, Soul Charge, just for gaining back um, lost momentum, uh, you know, or, you know, if you want to make a big board or something, or if you have, like, multiple synchros or something, like, in your graveyard, you want to bring them back, because, you know, in Link format, if you bring back a synchro, you know, it could be on any zone, you know, it doesn't have to be extra monster zone, but, you know, so it's it's pretty decent. Uh, foolish, because um, this Buster Blader that is treated as a um, Buster Blade are only in the field and graveyard. That is what makes it so um, you can just drop it and then it's treated as Buster Blader from there. And from there, it's actually a lot better than actually searching it. So it's better to dump him than to search him. So just keep in mind of that. Uh, Monster Reborn, because it's at one in the OCG, um, it's definitely understandable. You do have these big level sevens here. So Monster Reborn could definitely work. And you know, in case you want to take something from your opponent's grave, uh, that works out as well. Double Cosmic Cyclone, because Cosmic Cyclone, again, is pretty good against True Dracos, um, and it banishes instead of destroying, so, um, it, and it's just generic spell, spell trap card removal, so it, it, it doesn't hurt to play it, honestly. Well, I mean, it does take a thousand life points, so it does hurt a bit, so. So, one Destruction Swordman's Fusion. Uh, usually, people run on multiple copies, but since it's searchable, I guess it's not that big of a deal anymore. You just play one, and it could bring itself back if need be. I guess since uh, Link format has come around, we don't really need um, many more ways to bring out um, the fusion because, you know, the whole extra deck monster rule. So, yeah. So, double mausoleum of white. So, pretty much what it lets you do is that it lets you. Uh, Normal summon level one light monsters twice per. Well, it lets you normal summon level one mo uh, normal monster, light tuner monster. I said normal monster, light tuner monster, uh, in addition to your normal summon. So, 
if you have like a whelp and a sage, or if you have sage, you can search whelp and then normal summon out whelp thanks to mausoleum. So it's like a double search, pretty much. And it's pretty good. Um, I can definitely see why he runs it. It, it, it just beats up the deck a bit. It, it makes it a little more consistent when you draw like that sage or that whelp and then you get the normal summon again. So, um, I do find it a bit risky after that because um, it doesn't really have much use after, you know, that initial effect. It's, it's just here to let you double summon. But it is once per turn. So, like, it, it isn't just once. It's like you can do it like every turn this card's on the field. So that's definitely pretty good. Um, especially if you're playing like we're offed out or one for one and you know so next we have destruction sword memories you drop a destruction sword card and special summon a buster blader monster from your deck um definitely works well in this deck because you do run a lot of destruction sword cards more than i usually see but so it it it's definitely doesn't hurt to put this card at two and um you can banish it from your graveyard and and the proper materials to summon out the Buster Blader Fusion from your extra deck. Um, only problem being it has to be an extra monster zone. So, I mean, if you do have a Link monster out, I mean, making links doesn't seem too hard with this deck, actually. So, it definitely might not be a problem. So, next we have Triple Cradle, which I think is the best card in the deck. Because it sets up your Destruction Sword memories and um, it gives you a free Buster Dragon. So... Here's what it does. So you send a Buster Blader monster and a Destruction Sword card from your deck to the graveyard and special summon a Buster Dragon from your extra deck. The, the last effect isn't relevant. It just protects Destruction Sword cards, but most times you won't have a Destruction Sword card out. So what this deck can do is that if you bring out like a decode talker, right? So let's say, so let's just say you have a decode talker out, right? So let's say you use Cradle. Um, Cradle drops you um, any Buster Blader monster, so even the Destruction Swordman one, and uh, your, your Destruction Swordman memories as well. So the chop card that summons out your Buster Blader fusion. So you summon out Buster Dragon with this, and then after that, you can banish memories. Since memories is a chop card, and it doesn't have that the, the turn that like you can't use it to turn that center graveyard. It doesn't have that clause, so you can banish it like. As soon as Buster Dragon is summoned and then get the fusion out as well and you have your opponent in like the soft lock um, pretty easy since you have your since decode talker gives you two link zones or link points is what they're being called now and um, you'll be able to go into uh, more monsters that way since uh, two link points give you two more places you can put extract monsters in so one for your buster blader fusion one for your buster dragon put your opponent into soft lock you have your decode talker you have your buster blader fusion you have your um buster dragon out uh the only real downside being is that buster dragon has to leave um at the end of the next turn but if you pull this combo out uh, at the right time i'm pretty sure that might not matter too much you you might be able to pull a win uh just in time before buster dragon has to leave um, what I did is I ran, um, I ran, a Revival of the Dragon Lords just to make sure Buster Dragon wouldn't get destroyed, so he, he would stay on the field, but this deck can actually summon Buster Dragon real easily, so you shouldn't have to worry about that too much, especially during your turn. Like, if it, if it, like, if you activate Cradle during your opponent's turn, and then you summon out Buster Dragon... Um, and it will be destroyed at the end of your turn, you can either make another one, or you can just leave it be. And, like, try to go for a game. But, it's it's not hard to make another one. So, DNA Surgery, um, so as long as you control it, you can make all your opponent's monster dragons, which would really help the fusion. I, I, I might bump it up to two, because I feel like making your opponent's monster dragons is real important for this deck to work so going to the extra deck we have triple the buster blader fusion he so pretty much when your opponent's monsters are dragons they are changed to defense and they can't activate their effects and he pierces as well and he gains a thousand for each which combos with buster dragon because buster dragon makes them all 
all your opponent's monster dragon type monsters. And Buster Dragon also has a lot of uh, other effects that are pretty good. So one hot red dragon archmean bane. You run him because you run abyss, and the the way you would use it is is that since you only have like initially you would only have one point um, where you can put extra deck monsters in. So if you go Buster Dragon or Beals, right, you use a level one tuner and that monster, right, to bring up um, Abyss, right. So Abyss can negate a face up card during either player's turn as a quick effect once per turn. So he has, so he's pretty strong. And when he inflicts battle damage, he also gets to bring back a tuner. So he's level 9, and Bane is level 10, or a level 1 tuner, actually. Wait, no, does it have to be level 1? No, it doesn't have to be level 1, actually. You can just bring back any tuner. But all your tuners are level 1, except for, like, the Ghost Ogres and the Snows, or not Snow Springs, so. Um, so if you bring back a level 1 tuner and then use him for a Synchro Summon, you can summon out Bane. And what Bane can do is you can tribute uh, any monster to special summon uh, Archfiend Abyss monster, or not Archfiend Abyss, just a Red Dragon Archfiend monster from your graveyard. And Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss is a Red Dragon Archfiend, so you can bring it back, and from there, um, you'd have two Synchro monsters on the field. Since when you bring it back, it'll be into a main monster zone, uh, away from any link points, since you, you don't want to waste those. Uh, so one Beals, um, it's pretty easy to summon, it's just a Dark Tuner, and your level 1 domain monster is a Dark Tuner, so it definitely isn't that hard. Uh, Gofu is a Dark Tuner, but I don't think you would actually use it for a Synchro Summon, not in this deck. So one Crimson Blader, uh, just to stop your opponent from summoning monsters. So if you know your opponent's using something like True Dracos, and you just and you run Crimson Blader over something, then you know you, you know that they can't summon out Masterpiece for a turn, so it's definitely helpful. Um, one Omega, because Omega is not only easy to make and very good for bringing back banished cards, since this deck banishes quite a few cards. Um, it also, when, it, when you banish it and bring itself back, um, you can uh, put it into a main monster zone, so you have a free open um, mon uh, extra monster zone space or free link point space if you were using links. So triple buster dragon, he's the reason why the fusion is so good because he makes your opponent's monster dragons and then if you just summon him off of off of a whim then you could just special summon a buster blader monster so while you don't control buster blader like any buster blader even the fusion um, then you can special summon a buster blader monster from the graveyard and, you know, the regular Buster Blader would gain 500 since all your opponent's monsters are dragons. So, it would get that boost. And then, during, uh, during your opponent's turn, you can equip a Destruction Sword card to it. So, he, you can give him the Domain, you can give him the card that negates uh, spell, face of Spell and Trap cards, or you can give him the one that stops your opponent's monsters in Grave. So, it's definitely, you definitely it's kind of like a Toolbox card um, in itself. So, that's definitely pretty good. And one Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, because you do run these level seven Buster Bladers, and you are you, there are going to be times where you have multiple ones, so you definitely just go into Flare, um, and like bait your opponent out into gaming them. So you see two monsters in the side deck right here. These are uh, proxies for the two Link monsters that that he or I assume he ran, because I I didn't actually see Decode Talker in his deck list. There's only it was only a 13 card extra deck, and I was like, wait, there's no way he ran this deck without a Deco Talker, because Deco Talker is the most generic and best Link monster right now, other than Mrs. Radiant, but Mrs. But you know this deck doesn't use too many Earth monsters, so I was like, yeah, it's probably it's probably Deco Talker. <laughs> so, uh, Block Spider is a proxy for Link Spider. I'll Photoshop in um, Link Spider for you guys, so you'll be seeing Link Spider. When you when I see Block Spider and you'll be seeing um, Deco Talker instead of Link Slayer, so Block Link Spider, not <laughs> a Block Spider. Link Spider is a Link one. He just special summon a level a level four lower um, normal monster into its link point once per turn. At first, I, I was confused because he, he uses a normal monster, and I was like, what normal monster does he does he run? And then I was like, wait, he uses Gofu, and Gofu brings out tokens, and you can use those tokens to Link Summon Link Spider. Um, and then there's Decode Talker, which I assume he ran. 
it is not it is in the deck list but it's like i kind of like what other link monster could he run at at this point in time so it's a uh, link three it's two or more effect monsters and um you I, I would assume you just use it for link points but you could use it for an effect for deco talker to gain attack equal to uh well 500 attack for each um monster in the link point that he has and if your opponent tries to target um a card you control you contribute a monster in one of his link points um especially if your opponent has a monster in, in, in his link point then that definitely works out for you even better could you contribute that monster as well to negate that effect so it's pretty good against uh true dracos actually um so and it gives you a uh, more like it gives you the link points where you can summon monsters from the extra deck so it definitely works out um i'm, I'm just glad to see Buster Blade are topping. Even if it is a locals, it's it's not that big of a deal. But uh, it's just nice to see uh, these decks coming back in link format. You know, you are gonna have to play the game differently. You know, as I said before, which is why I want to focus more link format from this point on because focusing on the current format too much might uh, might hinder um, the transition into link format when it comes around. So anyway, that's all I got to say for now. Uh, this was Nishra here, Nishra up.